All right, so it's been a while since we've done this, but I do want to take some time now to look at public opinion polling data because we've seen some interesting trends emerge over the course of the last couple of weeks. Now, keep in mind that the race overall is still very close, but there's some really, really positive signs here for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. So let's start with national polling data, and this is going to tell us who will win the popular vote. Not the deciding factor in the election, of course, but possibly indicative of trends that we're seeing at the state level as well. So when you look at polling averages of national data from 538, they put Kamala Harris 3.3 points ahead of Trump. Now, if you've been following the national trend, it's continued to tick up little by little for Harris each week since she passed Trump. But I do want to zoom in and look at one particular survey from We Are Big Village. So as you can see, on July 22nd, this is the last poll that they conducted with Biden in the race. Trump was ahead by a single point. That was about what other polls were saying as well at the time. But as you can see, their first post Biden poll flipped it and it put Harris ahead by plus one. Then by mid August, she tripled and quadrupled her lead respectively. And now at the end of August, she's got a seven point national lead ahead of Donald Trump. So within the span of one month, this poll had Trump ahead and now it has Harris ahead by a lot outside the margin of error, which is a really good sign. Now, the caveat is that this poll could be an outlier, right? But I actually think this may be indicative of a broader trend, right? Because other polls are showing that she's polling higher and higher nationally. Five points here, four points there. That's a really good sign. So it tells us that she is growing her national lead. Having said that, though, that isn't the most important factor because, of course, we have a broken system where the Electoral College actually decides who wins. So the real question is, how is she doing in swing states? So the last time we uh, looked at swing state polling data, she effectively erased Trump's lead. They're both statistically tied in effectively every single swing state. Now, that's true still till this day, but there's some really interesting developments that I want to talk about here. So let's take a look at this poll from Fox News where they surveyed voters in the Sun Belt. And here's what they found. Harris is leading in three of the four Sun Belt states. She's plus one in Arizona, plus two in Georgia, plus two in Nevada, and Trump is plus one in North Carolina, all within the margin of error. But nonetheless, still good news because a red state like North Carolina is very much in play. Now, this poll doesn't seem to be an outlier because Cook political report actually shifted North Carolina from lean Republican to toss up. But the question is why? North Carolina is a red state that Biden basically had no chance of winning, and now all of a sudden it's in play for Kamala Harris. What is driving support for Harris in a state like North Carolina? Well, it all comes down to one very important factor voter enthusiasm. Democrats are just more excited to vote for Kamala Harris than they were for Biden. This is a trend we are seeing nationally and at the state level as well. So I want to take a look at this Gallup poll because it measures voter enthusiasm and they compare March to August. And as you can see in March, Republicans and Republican leaners were actually more enthusiastic than Democrats. But as of August, that flipped. Voter enthusiasm jumped by 23 points for Democrats. And they are now leading Republicans on enthusiasm by 14 points. But I mean, that's all well and good, but who actually cares about enthusiasm, right? The real question is whether or not that enthusiasm is going to translate into actual votes. And the answer is, you bet your ass it will. And I say this because the New York Times tracked voter registration in both North Carolina and Pennsylvania, and look at what they found. Democrats now have a slight advantage for voter registration. Republicans were dominating, and as you can see, they peaked during the GOP convention, but that trend has also been reversed. And that right there is Harris's ticket to victory. This is why so many of us were calling on Biden to drop out of the race, because he just wasn't able to energize the Democratic Party's base, which all but guaranteed his his defeat. Now, Harris has completely reversed that trend, and she's done so in multiple states and nationally. And that enthusiasm is now translating into newly registered voters, which is exactly what you want to see if you are a Democrat. Now, with regard to North Carolina, keep in mind, it's still a toss up. But the fact that it's even a toss up when this was safely going for Donald Trump just a month ago, that's a really huge shift. Now, I want to share why it's now a toss up and what's happening. Voter enthusiasm is a key component, but I'm going to tell you why. So in North Carolina, what's happening is fascinating. Larger metropolitan areas are growing in population, and as they grow, they are increasingly leaning Democrat, whereas in rural areas, 
they're not changing demographically and the population isn't necessarily growing, but rural voters are just increasingly shifting towards Republicans. And essentially, they're canceling out the gains that Democrats are making in bigger cities because so many rural people are much more Republican than they were a couple of years ago. So rather than one county going 50 percent, 60 percent for Republicans, they're now going 70 and 80 percent. The question is, who's going to win out? And it may come down to voter enthusiasm, specifically in a couple of counties, a couple of rural counties that are largely populated by black voters. If enough of them show up in high enough numbers, that could literally decide who wins the state. So I want to share a clip from MSNBC data analyst Steve Kornacki, who's going to give us a little bit more insight into this phenomenon. We think of it more as a red state. North Carolina did go for Donald Trump in 2020, really the only time in, in sort of modern political history uh, since 1980. It's gone Democratic was for Barack Obama by about this much in 2008. But North Carolina has been close. It's been a couple points. Take a look back at 2016. Donald Trump carried the state. It was by about three and a half points. You could see Democrats erased more than half of that Trump margin from 2016 in 2020, brought it down to just about a 75,000 vote difference between Trump and Biden in 2020. So, you know, we're talking about not huge changes needed here for Democrats to actually flip the state. And so what Democrats are, are looking at here, let's take it from their perspective first, there's sort of a tension in North Carolina between different uh, uh, parts of the state geographically. And we see this nationally, too. What Democrats, where they draw hope from are cities and metropolitan areas, suburbs, big, densely populated suburbs with lots of college degrees. Those are the voters who've been going in their direction. Areas around, this is Wake County, the Research Triangle, uh, you know, uh, Chapel Hill, Durham in this area, too. You know, Metrolina, Charlotte, that area, even out in the mountains, Asheville. You know, the, those are sort of the areas demographically that are rich for, Dem uh, for Democrats and are trending in their direction. And I'll give you an example. Look at Wake County. This is where Raleigh is. Big county, big win for Biden in 2020. But just go back in time here and see how this has been evolving. We'll go all the way back to 08. Remember, Obama did win Carolina in 08. He only carried Wake by 14 points. Look how the Democratic margin has grown in the Trump era from 14 with Obama, almost double that for Biden in 2020. And that's what we see. We see that in Mecklenburg County. That's where Charlotte is as well. Huge, huge population centers. So what Democrats see is these are big population centers, importantly, that are growing. They're gaining population and they're becoming more Democratic. So the Democrats say, look, four more years of population growth, of becoming a little more Democratic, that's what they hope, could certainly erase in their mind the lead that Donald Trump had statewide. The other thing that's happening in Carolina, though, is it's not just about the Blue Islands in the state. It's about the many of them very small rural red counties. But look how many of them there are in the state. They add up. So I'll show you a small one here, and this is what we're talking about. Look at Surrey County. It's very small. Trump won it by 52 points in 2020. Now take a look how this one has evolved in the Trump age. Uh, back in 2008, you know, Obama got clobbered here, but the margin was 28 points. A 28-point Republican win in 2008 is now up to 52 for Donald Trump in 2020. And again, this is one small county, but this is happening in so many of these red counties around the state. So they're getting redder. The metro areas are getting bluer. The Democrats hope the numbers work in their favor because of population growth. And I think if there's one X factor here, you do see this patch of blue counties in here. These are small counties. These tend to be rural counties. They have large African-American populations. And you see, Democrats did win them. Biden did in 2020, but not quite by the level uh, and not quite with the relative turnout that Barack Obama got when he carried the state in 2008. That might be the key variable. So this is why newly registered voters could make all the difference here. She is this close to snatching North Carolina away from the Republican Party. And if enough people come out, she takes that state. This is huge, and this is going to be a state to watch. I can't wait to see what happens. Now, it's not necessarily a must-win state for Harris, but if she wins, this just gives her a bigger cushion, obviously. You know, let's say she ekes out a victory in North Carolina. She gets all 16 electoral votes. That's important because then if something happens in Georgia where she loses, which is a state that also has 16 electoral votes, that loss would no longer be catastrophic. A win in North Carolina would cancel out a loss in a state like Georgia or Michigan, which has 15 electoral votes. So North Carolina being in play is a game changer. But here's the thing. 
she doesn't have to carry North Carolina to hit 270, as Brett Baer of Fox News, of all places, begrudgingly explained in the following clip. Go back to the map. It goes, brings us to 264 to 258. Again, 270 is what you need to win. And guess what remains? Georgia. Georgia remains. It was the closest contest in 2020, decided by less than a quarter of a percentage point in favor of President Biden. Our recent polling showed the widest gap, six points, for former President Trump over President Biden. But now that has closed. Harris has a two-point lead in our latest poll. It's expected to be a close race. That's obviously within the margin of error. But both candidates are spending a lot of time in Georgia. And if that lead holds, she wins Georgia. She wins the presidency of the United States. Damn. You know it pained Brett Barrett to say that because, of course, Trump isn't going to be happy that he's performing so poorly in a Fox News poll. And, you know, sure enough, Trump, of course, took to Truth Social to call Fox News' polls rigged and worthless and shared this incredibly long statement from his campaign shitting on their poll. And I'm not going to read all of this because, you know, they're just trying to nuance troll the methodology. But let's just say that Trump wasn't calling Fox News' poll rigged and worthless when he was ahead. But now that Harris is ahead, all of a sudden the polls are worthless. In other words, you know, the polls are only fair and accurate if he's leading. But if he's losing, you know, they're rigged and worthless. Listen, say what you will about, about Fox News' commentary. Their polling is in line with other pollsters' findings. So it's not rigged and worthless. Their, their polling is actually valuable. But in conclusion, Harris's momentum is being fueled by a massive spike in voter enthusiasm. The only question is, will it be enough to pull off a victory? And is this going to last until November 5th? We genuinely don't know. But I do know that coming out of the DNC... They've raised over $540 million, and they've got tens of thousands of volunteers across the country who are trying to expand upon the voter registrations that are happening organically in certain states like Pennsylvania and North Carolina. So even though this will likely be a really close race, she's looking good right now. The question is, again, can she maintain this momentum? That is the ultimate thing that is going to determine this election. If she can, then she can win. But whether or not that happens, we'll just have to wait and see. But as of right now, looks pretty good for uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 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 <laughs> tree? They not like us. Tree? Tree? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? tree? <laughs>